So Ian, you had four years out of the game. Were you ever worried that, or did you ever think that you weren't going to get back in after that period of time? Yeah, um, yeah I mean, I, I think maybe. I, I certainly think the first couple of years, it was it was very much my choice and uh, I had some things to sort out. Um, but once it got to third year, three and a half years, then you're thinking, um, you know, maybe football's turned its... Not, not that football ever owed me anything. Um, but I do, I do think my track record was OK, so I felt it just needed uh, a chairman who was a bit more free-thinking, shall we say, to give me an opportunity. And I found one here and uh, in Lachlan Cameron, and it's went very well since then. And at Air United, do you feel, feel comfortable? You've just signed a new two-year contract. Mm -hmm. Is it a, a long-term plan here? Yeah, I mean, I, I've I'm gone to the days when I'm very... Oh, I'm very ambitious, but you know I've got no uh, no real desire to climb the ladder again, as it were. I've been there, done that, um, so I'm very I'm very very happy here, very settled. It, it, it's uh, it's a great club, great people here, but it suits my life uh, now as well. Um, albeit if we manage to do what we want to do this season, then you know we would, I, would, I would make some real changes to the club to see it kind of flourishing going forward. So is the goal for this season? to stay up and then consolidate and then build for the future? Well, I think so. I mean, I think staying up is a, is a big thing. When you look at the calibre and the size of the clubs in, in the league, um, I think the landscape's kind of changed in Scottish football with the emergence of the Highland League clubs, obviously Rangers problems. You've now got a lot of big full-time clubs in the, in, in the Championship, the old First Division. Um, so, yeah, albeit, you know, Saturday we played in Barton uh, for the last game of the first quarter and... You know, but once we found our feet after the first three games, uh, you know, without respect to everybody, but with no real fear to play anybody now. So, uh, but I think uh, staying up would be regarded as a bit of a success. So that that's got to be the target. And was it a big plus for you that it was only those three games that it took for your players to then get ready for this level? Well, I mean, it's never a plus to lose matches, but uh, I mean, listen, it's away at Queen of South and away at Dundee United, or two of them. Uh, Ray Thrower started the season really well. I felt against Ray Throwers in the first game we had chances to, to, to score, to, to win the game or draw the game. It might have been a little bit different, but even if we were playing at our very best and we're completely acclimatised, if you go to Palmerston or Nassitoff with their good players, Stephen Doby included, you go to Tannadice, it's, it's a big ask. So, But since then, I think we've played seven games. We've won four of them and drawn two and lost one. Ironically, that's the best we've played, the one we lost. And I'm interested because you've got a few players from the Scottish Premiership in the Premier League I've got a player from the Premier League down south. Mm -hmm. Is that a is that a big plus point for you to then have these teams bring these send these players down for you to develop them? Well, it is. I mean, the the, the lad in question there, uh, uh, Jamie Thomas from Burnley, he's been really unlucky because you know, we've got a kid called Craig McGuffey who has emerged far quicker than anybody thought, and he's turning into a real, real serious talent. I mean, there's already significant interest in them. So that has pushed them down the, the pecking order. They, the key ones for us were Conrad Balatoni and Gary Harkins. Harkins has been... I had him at Thistle as a, when he was coming through, but he's been one of the most talented players in Scottish football for a number of years in the Premier League. And Balatoni's played over 100 games in the last three years in the Premier League. I was amazed to get them, um, but we did get them, uh, and they've made a, a significant difference. And those two that you've mentioned were late purchases. Mm -hmm. Is that something that for clubs like Air United, wait until after the window, is that a, a bonus? No, I mean, I, I, it wasn't by choice. I mean, I, I was, the, the, the Harkins thing came up out of the blue. Uh, you know, Paul Hartley phoned me and there was, a, there was an opportunity there. And I, go, I know Gary and his family really well. At Balatoni, I, I, was, I was on that for six, seven weeks. And I think it's important. The way I approach it anyway, it, it, sometimes it may not be the position you want, but if it improves your team, then you need to get you know get them in and then move somebody else out. But uh, Ballot only took a while for us to get them. Um, but he has proven worth the wait, I think. And is it due to experience and the, the makeup of the player that they've settled in so quickly? I just think they're good players. I, mean, I think they've got a point to prove as well. I, I am uh, flabbergasted that Balatoni didn't get a club in the Premier League. Um, and I mean, I think he is trying to go abroad at some stage in his career. Um, Harkins, obviously, there was been an issue with him in Dundee, and I don't know what it was, and it's really none of my business. But uh, you know, he was a big player for them over the last two or three seasons. Um, so, 
Listen, it was just it was just great to get them. And the, the positive thing for me is that our players that were here, I mean, I remain very loyal to the vast majority that brought us up. I didn't want to make wholesale changes, but now they've all kind of reacted really well. I mean, I knew the type of boys they were because I've worked with them. They're great boys. But they've all reacted really well to it. And, 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 and they've raised, you know, looking at the board, Robbie Crawford, Doherty, Gilmer, Forrest, uh, McGuffey, Paddy Boyle, Nicky, they've all raised their game because of these boys and it's been it's been good to see. You mentioned proving themselves. Is that an attribute you always try and look for in a player? Well, I think so. I mean, I, I think it's obviously it's all about the collective group of, the, you know, the, the group of players. But, you know, you, individually you've all got to think, you know, what you want to achieve. And, you know, I think we've got three or four that can go on from us and go out and play at a real good level. You know, so they've got to do the business with us to get that. Um, also as a club, it's a, it's a very special club and you know it, it had a quite a prominent place in Scottish football for many years, many years ago I may add, and it's about you know getting you know here to that type of level again. I mean I, I think the potential's here, I, I, it's not a sleeping giant, I hate that phrase, but um, I, I, I certainly think it could be an established full-time community championship club. It kind of touched on the next subject there, what is the ultimate goal for you for Real United? Is it to establish them in the championship or is it to get to the premiership because as a town do they not just bring it alive? Well I mean, I'm not even, I wouldn't even think about that, I want to establish it as a good community full-time football club, properly run full-time football club. Uh, I don't want uh, my chairman to keep having to finance it, uh, which he does. Um, and then, you know, once all that's done and it's hopefully touch wood flourishing because I'm very aware how things can go pear-shaped in football. It used to be it went pear-shaped over a year, but now it's over weeks. Um, and then maybe I can, you know, once I've done maybe another whatever, then maybe I could just do some sort of other job here and move upstairs or whatever, I don't know. That's for further down the, down the line, but uh, that, that's the aim. I'm interested in your thoughts on the new formats of the League Cup and the Challenge Cup, since mm. you've been in both and you've done well mm. in both. Is, is, how, how have you found those? Well, the League Cup worked well for us. We, we were, we, we, in one respect, it worked well for us. We were nowhere near ready, but we, you know, in the first game of the season, we beat Hamilton out there, and I think all the players got a big lift from that. And uh, we managed to qualify, and even from a financial side of things, it was good uh, for the club. I mean, the, the, I, I think the Iron Brew Cup used to be the champ, used to be the B&Q Cup, used to be this, blah, 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 blah. blah. Um, I haven't really noticed a difference because we've never drawn any of the teams and you know, and, and now in the quarterfinals we'll get St Mern at Love Street. It's not Love Street, it's Mern Park. Um, and that'll be the, once we play in four times in the league, we play them in that cup, we played them in the league cup. So I've not really noticed a difference in that. But I, I dare say if you speak to the Alloa manager or the Alloa fans and they went away down to Wales and won 4-2, or I, I believe it was a great day in Dumfries on Sunday, Queen of South versus Linfield. So I'm, I'm sure those people have got real positive things to say about And... You've been quite outspoken about, you know, you, you thought that BBC, I don't want to put words in your mouth, so I'm going to try and put this properly, maybe overlooked the championship. Um, you're well, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I don't think I'm, I used to, I don't think I'm ever outspoken nowadays. I'd, I'd very rarely speak, I had to be cajoled into doing this. So, <laughs> uh, no, you. I mean, a journalist phoned me up and, and, and he said, isn't it just a minute? And I said, yes. And I mean, that was it. Um, there's contractual things in place here. The guy I used to work for the BBC, the head of sports, a good mate of mine. So uh, I think the BBC do very well covering Scottish football. Listen, I'm sure they would like to cover some of the games in the Championship. I think uh, Hibs v and United at Easter Road from the top two, and there's eighteen twenty thousand there. It's probably as appealing as most games of Scottish football. But you know, you've got to have the audience there. Um, finally. Is there anything, because this whole f programme is about improving, trying to improve Scottish football, is there anything that you think, or one thing that you think can improve Scottish football? One thing to revolutionise our game? Out of, out of so many <laughs> different things that you could... Uh, well, the thing I said for, for many years is, is uh, there's far too many clubs. There's just way too many clubs. And I, and I always temper that with the fact, you look at the Angus clubs, there's four up there. I always temper that with the fact that uh, I know the guys up there at Forfar and at Breaking and they're just tremendous people and, and you, you know they would then say to me that they're not the problem, they always run their ship tightly and without debt etc etc. Indeed 
I remember my first game back was at Brecon City where United after three and a half, four years out and the chairman and one of the directors stood outside the, the stadium. I use this, that phrase loosely for, for Glebe Park to, to, to wait to shake my hand and welcome him back to Scottish football. So uh, these clubs would disagree because there's, they've obviously got their place, but there are there is far too many teams in my opinion. And the leagues are far too small, you know, because you have the, the intense football coverage, it's a needs must. You know, we can't moan about taking the TV money uh, and then say, well, we can't kick off and you can't do that, you can't. But you can make it a bit of a lesser blow by, you know, getting the, the leagues a bit bigger and playing each other twice a year the way it used to be. Uh, and there's a few other things, but they're, they're the main ones. There's too many teams and we play each other too many times. And I know I said the last one was a final point, but this is mm -hmm. going to be my final point. If there was a neutral that lived around Ayrshire or somebody hasn't been for a while, what would you say about your style of football, what you're doing just now in Ayr, that they should come along and support Ayr United? Well, I think my style is quite pragmatic. I know there's, there's an awful lot of young managers now that I've, I've noticed in the last three, four, five years that there has to be a philosophy involved. I, I don't really, I don't, A, I don't really know what that means, and B, uh, I think your philosophy is always to find a way to win. I mean, when we can, we try to play the ball around the pitch, and uh, I, my pet hate is overplaying them uh, and move the ball about the pitch. But what you are seeing is, is, is a group of players that have achieved in the last uh, year or two and, 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 and continue to, to overachieve. And if, you know, if they can stay up uh, this season, it's a, it's a really significant achievement for this club because you know, when I arrived, there were 600 people coming in to watch. You know, and 18 months later, we had 5,000 at home in the playoff game, and the crowds are up again. And it helps with the travelling supports. I mean, St Mirren brought a great crowd, and Dunfermline, as usual, could bring a good crowd. That that helps. But you see people that I think they f they feel quite proud to play for the United, and and uh, I, I, you know, and our home record is very good, and and we do like to play.